Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing in a small space in my backyard. Today I want to show y'all a couple of things. I'm also going to try something this year um, that I said I probably wouldn't try but I am going to try. I'm gonna tell you in a minute what that's gonna be um, but I want to show you something. So does everyone remember this plant that was literally eaten up? Um, it is a kale. The bugs had eaten it up and I was like I don't know what's eating it um, and I just left it. Look at that. Look at that, there are more leaves growing. Let me show you the other one. Here's the other one, same thing. Um, and it is coming back. And so when I say that I am the gardener that will leave things and just see what happens, I am the gardener that will leave things and see what happens. So I didn't always do that. I used to pull things out so quickly um, and I was somewhat running myself into the ground because if you pull something, then of course you gotta put something back. I just did my edges, y'all. I didn't get all the stuff off. <laughs> Me and my daughter are leaving for a vacation in a very short period of time. Probably in the next two hours, me and her will be leaving and traveling to go to vacation. Um, we will be back sometime Wednesday. Super excited. I need it. Um, but what I'm going to show you today, I'm going to try to overwinter a pepper again. <laughs> So really quick, let's talk about overwintering peppers and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it. I have seen uh, people overwinter peppers and basically what it is, is you cut the pepper down right at the V that's in your pepper. Um, you put it into new soil, if I understand this correctly. Um, I believe the soil is supposed to be like an indoor soil or it can be, some people do, some people don't. I'm not doing that. I'm gonna use some compost that I already have because I don't have time to go to the store and grab a bag of soil. So I'm gonna use compost. It is going to be in my laundry room. Um, there's a lot of things gardening related in my laundry room. And so I know people are like, there's gonna be bugs in your laundry room. Um, anything could be in your laundry room. Anything could be in my laundry room right now. <laughs> if I'm honest um, but my laundry room is closed off from the rest of my house so you want to take it out of whatever soil that it is in um, and put it into a smaller container because you're not trying to grow it over the winter you're just trying to keep it alive over winter um, and so last year when I did this I did not take it out of the soil that it was in as a matter of fact I left them in the bags with all the soil that's in the bags and it's hard to keep the soil in the bags moist over summertime. So imagine watering in the house with the water coming out of the bottom of the bag. So you're like, well, I'm not watering that often because I'm going to have to clean the water up. So this year I'm going to put it in a smaller pot and I'm going to put some compost in it. I'm probably going to put a little bit of granulated fertilizer in it just uh, to make sure that I keep the plant alive. And then I'm going to keep you up to date with uh, how this goes. <laughs> also, this chair that I'm sitting on, um, I have the link in my description below, but I now kind of work with the company. Um, I love this little chair. It's called a garden kneeler. Um, it has a spot for your tools and different things. And um, so the chair, you can sit on it or you can flip it over and you can kneel on it. and the little pouches still will fit on there. And I do believe they have a more up-to-date version. This is just the version that I have. So I'm gonna update the link below. If you're interested in it, you can get 15% off. Um, I am uh, sponsored by them. I'm being paid by them, however you wanna say it. I just want everybody to know that. But I'm gonna get the pot that I'm gonna use and then I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I have a lot. Someone's cutting their grass. I hope you can hear me. <laughs> Sounds like a... That's, Maybe they won't be cutting their grass because it sounds like it's not working. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry, y'all. I have a lot of peppers that are still growing. However, I'm only going to do one this year. Hopefully, I can take care of it. And then next year, I may do more. I would have never thought that it would be this hard for me to decide which pepper plant I wanted to pull. All of the peppers either still have flowers or either have peppers on them. So I need to decide which one I'm gonna pull. 
It's going to be a Hungarian wax pepper because there aren't many flowers and there aren't many peppers. So I feel better <laughs> doing this one. Also, I'm going to show you that tomato from there. I took the sucker off of a plant earlier this year and I planted it. I'm thinking next year I may start a new round from suckers. I don't have any tomatoes on it, but I definitely have some uh, flowers. So I'm going to show you that before we end this video. Okay. So we have our pepper. If you look down here, you can see that there is a V. These cuts are gonna look very drastic, but from the videos that I've watched, it's supposed to be a very drastic cut because you don't wanna keep most of the plant. Most of the plant is gonna go, um, and you just want to keep the top of the stock and you want to keep the roots. So I grabbed some compost, and this is a much smaller container because all you're trying to do is keep the roots alive. When it's time to plant it back out next year, you'll put it back into a bigger container. So I have a few of these. I'm going to cut right above the second set of these. Um, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> and I'm going to cut right above a node. I'm going to pull you in a little bit closer and show you what I mean. So right here, you have your stem. This is my first V. I have a V here and I have a V there. I have a node here where leaves would grow and I have a node here where leaves would grow. So I'm gonna cut this stem, this stem. I'm gonna cut right here at the V and I'm gonna cut right here at the node and right here at the node. And I'm also going to take this plant, um, I'm gonna take this stem as well. Y'all are not gonna believe this. I did not press play when I cut this plant. Uh, but let me show you really quick and I may get another one and just show you again. But so these are my two V's. This is my first V right here. These are my other two V's. I chose to cut at the node of the second set of V's. Um, and so that's the plant right there. By the way, thank you to the person who sent me this trial. I think I said it already. It is getting used. Also, someone sent me a scale earlier this week uh, to weigh my, my produce. Very excited about that. Thank you very much. Um, I have not sent my personalized thank you yet, but it is coming. It's been a very long week at work. Not a good excuse. Um, and we were getting ready for a vacation. Awesome. Not a good excuse. I will be sending my thank you, but I wanted to say it on the video. Thank you very much for sending me that. So at this point, you want to cut, like go around the root ball. And because this is grown in a bag, the whole bag is probably roots. But I want to get a good amount of roots. So I'm going around it, going deep. And so now you have the root ball. So this is the pot. So this should fit right down into this pot. Might have to take some of the dirt out and put it back. It's not dirt, it is soil. Um, that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna sit it down and then put it back. And I'm going to grow, throw a little bit of granulated fertilizer in here. Not a lot. You may not need this. By all means, do your own research on this, but this is how I'm doing it. And I'm only doing that little bit, not a lot. Cause like I said, we're not trying to grow this pepper throughout the winter. We're trying to keep it alive. I'm just gonna sit it in there and then I'm going to backfill. My son used to work at Lowe's and I kept asking him for a pair of these gloves. I love them. So when he left Lowe's, he gave them to me. So now I'm going to fill them back in, fill it back in. And right now I can probably put this in the greenhouse until it gets too cold outside. If you were not aware, peppers are perennial in some places uh, where they don't even have to bring them in if their temperatures don't get super low. And so essentially when you are overwintering peppers, that's what you're doing. You are uh, making them a perennial plant. So I have a problem. You guys see that? That's hornworm. I'm pretty sure that is hornworm, some kind of caterpillar. Um, I haven't been noticing any issues on my peppers. By the way, look at that thing. It's a shishito pepper. But I need to look around. It's somewhere. These plants aren't eating up. 
but I gotta find it unless it's dead. <laughs> unless it's already dead or it's somewhere eating something. Anyway, this is what hornworm or some kind of caterpillar, these are their droppings. So if you see these, you need to start looking for a worm. <laughs> So that's our pepper that we're gonna overwinter. It is a Hungarian wax pepper. I am going to keep you posted on this, um, but some of the care. Hmm. I'm not gonna tell you how to water it. I'm gonna tell you how I'm gonna water it um, and see how that works out for me this year. So while it's out in the greenhouse, while we're still getting some warm weather, I'm probably going to check it at least once a week. If it needs to be watered, I'm gonna water it. As long as it stays green, if it starts to turn brown like this, um, you can rub your finger on the plant, just scrape it a little bit. If it's still green in the inside, you see it right there? Then it means that the plant is still alive. If it turns brown and you scrape it and it is no green in there, chances are the plant is dead. But I would scrape far down to the bottom as possible um, because if it's still green at the bottom, then the roots are still alive. So I'm gonna keep you posted on this. I'm gonna try one, maybe two. I may try one more. Um, I'm not gonna try all of my plants. When it is time for the season to end, I'm gonna cut most of them back. Let me show you that tomato really quick. So this is the tomato that I don't know if you, if you were here for a while, you would have remembered that I pulled a sucker off of a tomato plant. Um, and that's the sucker now. And that sucker is producing flowers. I do not know that I'm gonna have enough time to actually get a tomato off of it, but there are more flowers coming right there. There's some up here. Before I leave, <laughs> I have to brag on these uh, loofahs that I talk so horribly about all year long. Uh, look at that guy. I'm so excited, they're all, oh, there's a wasp on that. I'm glad I didn't grab it. Um, and then there's one right here. And it's a pretty big one too. So I'm super excited about that. And, and, and I have plenty. I just don't know if they're gonna mature in time um, for me to actually get any like actual loofahs out them. I think they will, at least the two big ones, they'll probably be fine um, because I can let them dry in the house, but I'm just excited that they're growing at all. <laughs> so thanks for watching. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. I hope everyone has a wonderful week and I will see you all on Wednesday. Bye. Oh, of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Miss MS Asia Spratley, where I post about the things going on in the garden almost at this point in my life every day. Bye.